All right, in this portion of, in this video, I'm gonna teach you how to, uh, uh, what I expect you to do in, in executing this uh, Atwood experiment uh, lab. If you, I think you can see the, uh, uh, the address, it's the, the, the physicsaviary.com slash physics slash program slash labs slash Atwood lab. And if you go to that, uh, uh, if you go to that link, uh, I'll provide you with the link on the on the Canvas page. Uh, you come up with a, a a page that looks like this, and of course, you just click on the begin, and you know it sets up. It has an initial um, setup where you have a mass of 105 grams and a mass of of uh, two grams. I actually want you to 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 lower that. So for for trial one, for trial one, we want to now if you if you start to to click, notice that I can't get past 100 grams. Uh, why? Because this is supposed to be the descending, uh, the descending mass, and you can't if it's descending, you can't go uh, less mass than this one. So we have to lower this one first. So we're going to lower it down to 50 grams. Now we're free to lower this one, and we're going to. Uh, We'll lower it to 60, uh, 60 grams, and we're going to keep a uh, a 10 gram difference uh, for for each of these. I think that's the way uh, I did it. Let me make sure the physics aviary. This is the one I use, and yes, I use a, a 10 gram difference for each one. So we start off with 60 grams and 50 grams, and you just click. You know, let me show you. Everything is blank below here now. Let's click on the start. Um, click on start, and it descends. Now it shows you. It has a graph of position versus time, and it's a. Uh, you can see it's a curve, but then it has a, a a velocity versus time. Let me just ask you: What would if you were to to uh, get the a best fit line for this data? What would you get? You would get. Uh, Delta V over Delta T, well, what is Delta V over Delta T? It's acceleration. So this, the slope of this line is actually the acceleration. Um, and here is the data that they give you. And this is the data that you need for your, to for filling out your data table, data table one, um, you, they're gonna ask you for the, the distance traveled. That's this right here, that, that it's uh, 0.2398. Uh, meters, uh, 0.2398 meters. Uh, so you put that in your run one, um, and then you look at the time. The time that it took to, to do that is 0.736 seconds. Uh, so that's the data that you need from the first uh, from the first uh, uh, run, and then you just reset. Uh, Click it again, and there's a another graph, another velocity graph, and then new data. And this data will actually be a different. I don't, I didn't write down what the previous one was, but it was 24. This one is is uh, uh, 0.243 meters, 0.2430 meters, and it's uh, 0.727 seconds. And so that's the data that you enter into one. Now I'm just, I want you to do it. Uh, on your own and get the data. I want you to use this lab. So I'm not going to do it a third time. But then what we do, we're going to add, we're going to go to, uh, we're going to reset. And now you're going to go to uh, 110 grams. And we're going to take this one to 100 grams. Now we still have that 10 grams. Uh, 10 grams times uh, 9.8 uh, meters per second squared, we still have the same force. The same force as when we had the 60 and the 50. We have the same force, but there's more mass. So let's start it. And let, there's our graphs, and here's the data. Let's go to the bottom. Um, oh, more mass, that meant it went slower. So where we had like 0.7 something seconds, now it took a second to go. Notice that the 
the distance is still about the same. This one's a 0 0.2405 meters. Uh, so it took a little, uh, it took a little longer to descend. Now you're going to do that three times and get the average distance and the average time. Then you're going to, uh, uh, let's reset it. So you do that three times at 110 and hundred. We take this up to 160, uh, and this to 150. So you still have that 10 gram difference between the descending and the ascending mass. Hit start. We've increased the, the, the whole mass, uh, the entire mass of the system. And so what should it be? It should actually be longer. It should take, take longer. And let's see, uh, 1.221 seconds. Uh, still about 240 uh, millimeters, the uh, 0.2399 meters. So the distance is about the same. You have, to, you have to record it each time and get the average distance. So you do that three times. And unfortunately, we can't go, uh, we can't go to 210. Uh, 200 is the max. So let's maintain that uh, 90 degree, I mean, that, I'm sorry, that 10, that 10 um, gram difference. So we have a, a max of 200 grams here and 190 grams. We've, we uh, still have a 10 gram difference between the descending and the ascending masses, but now we have a total mass of uh, 390 grams. We've increased the mass. What do you think will happen? Will it be faster or will it be uh, slower? What do you think? It's going to be slower. Let's look at the graph. Um, and there's the, uh, there's the velocity. Let's look at the data. You have to scroll it all the way down to the bottom. I forget. The, I think the last one was like 1.22 uh, seconds. This is 1.382 seconds. So it was longer. And it's still about, uh, this is 244 millim millimeters, 0.24 uh, 0.244 meters. Uh, so the distance is staying the same, but it varies with each one. That's why you need to record the distance for each of these. Uh, and uh, record the distance for each of these and then average them to get your average distance. And you do the same with the time. You get, you record the, record it and uh, you record it and uh, get the average. Now, for extra credit, listen up, for extra credit, you can choose one of these. It doesn't matter which. Um, you, oops, sorry about that. You copy, you can copy the data. You can put it into a Excel sheet or a uh, numbers, if you're using a Mac or, or whatever, whatever other spreadsheet you have, or just, uh, you know, put it in a Word document and just calculate the slope of the time versus velocity. Um, I'm sorry, I should have said it the other way. Velocity versus time. You, you want the time on the, just like they have it here, you want the time on the uh, the x-axis, and you want the velocity on the vertical axis. Uh, if you want to, if you want to print this and just uh, try to estimate the uh, the slope of the line from this, you're welcome to do that. I find it easier to trans to transfer it to an Excel and let Excel come up with the uh, the best fit line. And if you display the the um, the equation, it gives you the slope. And compare the slope that you get uh, with the, uh, the slope that you calculate from your data tables. And um, you'll, uh, you should compare them. You should compare the different sl slopes that you get with, uh, or the compare the slope that you get with the measured acceleration and the calculated accel uh, the theoretical acceleration that you get from the data table. Okay, now that's only, the fir that's only data table one. Now let's go, what are we gonna do with data table two? Uh, 
we're going to start. Uh, let's reset this, and we can't lower we can't lower this lower than 190 because your descending mass uh, can't be less than your ascending mass. So uh, let me bring this down to uh, 180, and we're going to make this um, uh, 180. Uh, I'm sorry, I went up. I should have gone down. 185. Now we've got we've got a uh, a five gram difference between the the um, these masses, but the total mass is uh, 365 grams. 365 grams. We click start and it descends. We take the data. We look at the data. We go to the bottom. Oh, it's 1.9. Uh, 1.905 seconds, uh, and the, here we have 0.2477 meters. Okay, so that's we we um, we're going to do this three times, and you you get the distance, you get the time, and you uh, for three times, and you get the average. Now we're going to reset. We're going to increase 190, and um, we're going to go to uh, 175. Now, now there's a 10 gram difference between the masses, but it's still 365 total. So what are we doing? We're increasing the force, but keeping the mass the same. What should happen? If you increase the force, the acceleration should increase, which means that it should, uh, it should be a, st a shorter time. Let me see if I've already messed it up. Yeah, it already, it already cleared out. I don't remember what the time was. I think it was like 1.9. Let's go to the bottom here. Oh, 1.08. It was faster. The acceleration has increased. Still uh, 0.244, about, you know, 244.7 millimeters. Uh, 0.2447 meters. Now, you're going to do that three times. Reset it. We're going to uh, increase this and decrease this, still 365 gram total mass. We haven't changed the mass, but we're changing the difference between them. Now it's 15, uh, uh, I'm sorry, now it's, it's uh, uh, 25, uh, 25 gram difference. Start, is it gonna be faster or slower? Let's look, oh, less than a second, 0.843. And this is about 240 millimeters, 0.238 uh, meters. And then finally, we reset it, do that three times. We reset it, we got 200 and uh, 165. Uh, so we still have 365 total mass, but now we have a difference of what, 35, uh, 35 grams. Uh, and so it should be, this should be the fastest run yet. Start, let's go to the uh, data, and sure enough, 0 0.722 uh, seconds and uh, 0 0.2439 uh, meters, about uh, 244 mil uh, millimeters. So that's what I want you to do with this Atwood Machine Lab. I will send you the modified data tables. You fill those out instead of the ones in your uh, your uh, uh, lab book. Uh, again, if you take this data uh, and plot it, uh, you, you can copy it. And oops, I didn't get it all. I didn't get the very bottom of it. You can copy it. Ah. You can copy it, transfer it to an Excel file or a numbers file, uh, any kind of spreadsheet. And, and plot the velocity versus time uh, and get the slope of the line to see if it agrees with the acceleration that you calculated from your data. Okay, I think that's it. Uh, have fun playing with it, and uh, we'll end the video.